So, there's no end of issues with the sequel trilogy of Star Wars. From piss poor planning to awful scripts and just so much banking on nostalgia that the only new thing we got completely destroyed what three whole movies built up. But that's not going to be our main focus here today. Probably not for several weeks. Today, our focus is going to be the polar opposite of the last essay about the hero's journey. This time, why Ray's journey is completely terrible. Easy answer. It's not complete. Alright, alright. Let's be serious here. Now, Ray's hero's journey doesn't necessarily exist, at least not in a completed format. Now, I know what some of you will say, oh, it doesn't need one. Look at Captain America. As true as that is, Captain America's arc revolves around how others change around him and how he slowly sees the betrayal of his own organization as it's taken over. Hence why Winter Soldier is our abyss with seeing S.H.I.E.L.D. become Hydra and Civil War is our return as he returns with Bucky and events with Stark, Peggy dies, and everything about his mundane world is destroyed. We're back on topic here. With Star Wars, Hero's Journey works all too well for the series. The Skywalker family had a trend of starting out as whiny, evolving into warriors, and then becoming brooding, angry people. Okay, aside from that last point, if Disney is so insistent on nostalgia, keep the trend going. If you're so obsessed with it, keep the same arc. Especially if they want this thief to be a Skywalker, which is stupid for various reasons, but I digress. Now, a couple of disclaimers. I have nothing against the actors behind these characters. This is a critique of the characters in writing. This is not, I cannot stress this enough, not a rewrite of the trilogy. Secondly, some of these videos are going to be much longer and harder to make since it is very hard to get Disney Star Wars footage, so bear with me. And lastly, this is going to be a multi-part video, one for each movie, hence why this prologue is already long enough as is. So, if we must talk about character arcs, we have to go over why Rey doesn't really have an arc until the rise of Skywalker. Now yes, she certainly learns things, but never really goes in depth with them, and doesn't really affect her at all. She figures out stuff about the Jedi, and that's really about it. For all three movies, she learns stuff, and that's really it, and has an identity crisis throughout the entire trilogy. That's not entertaining, especially when those traits are the only things notable about her, with the exception of being nice to everyone and having a bloodlust for Kylo Ren. But I digress, let's get into this. So, where does our main girl here begin? She begins as a scavenger, her mundane world. She lives alone, collects scraps, and sells them off. Nothing too big. Ray's step two, Call to Adventure, begins with her finding BB-8 in the middle of nowhere and becoming friends with the droid. After that, our first threshold would be the First Order coming in and attacking the little scavenger village. Upon entering the unfamiliar, Rey is thrown into different trials, such as the escape from Jakku, meeting Han Solo, and the raid on Maz Kanata's bar. But here's where the journey gets a little confusing, as the raid is the end of Stage 5, but then Stage 6 is the Abyss, but we don't really have a proper Abyss. Rey getting kidnapped? Not really. It can be a low point for Finn, but he's not our central protagonist here. Besides. Her getting kidnapped actually helped the resistance here. It gave Han and Finn an excuse to go to Death Star 3, hot damn let me be. Plus, she does get to run around the place and cause a few minor issues for the First Order, and really pisses off Ren. Though it must be Han's death then. But here's the thing, it doesn't resonate with anyone outside of Kylo, Chewie, and the audience. Rey spent what, three days with this man? Yes, the same case could be said about Obi-Wan, but here is the difference. Obi-Wan showed up much earlier into the journey at Stage 2. Han showed up around Stage 4. Call to the Adventure and the Trials pits the hero at very different stages. Furthermore, it's the ramifications behind each death. When Han dies, we never see him again until Rise of Skywalker, as a memory, and even then, not interacting with the one 
who was supposed to feel the weight of his death. Obi-Wan showed up for the rest of the trilogy. His legacy lived on throughout it. We got to see the layers of him. Him being a wise mentor. Him being a warrior. The fact he still believed in much of the Jedi's dogmatic beliefs. With Han, he's just gone and never talked about or seen again. Because of this, we really don't get a stage 6 or beyond. We most certainly have stages 6 through 8, but emotionally, it just isn't there. We, the audience, cares about Han dying because of nostalgia. Chewie cares because they are best friends and we have established that as early as episode 4. Rey doesn't care, or at least shouldn't, and that's the problem with stage 6. Now let's move on to stage 7, the Enlightenment. And we can go ahead and see the falsehoods when we compare the Enlightenment of Luke and Rey. Both place their faith in the Force, but again, it lacks that weight. Luke places his faith in the Force by hearing the voice of Obi-Wan twice in the same movie and saving thousands of lives. Rey places her faith in the Force by grabbing a lightsaber, jumping over a large cliff, and saving one soul. Yes, it shouldn't matter how many lives someone saves when it comes to the Enlightenment stage of the hero's journey. But again, we look to the previous films about how this one fails so much. The original trench run showed different pilots gunning in towards the exhaust port and failing. As such, when Luke places his faith in the Force and succeeds, it feels much more rewarding since so many others failed beforehand. With Rey, we have seen numerous Jedi jump, force pull, fight a dark side user. Hell, four times in the last trilogy produced, we saw a lightsaber fight, and three times in the original trilogy. The Enlightenment stage is supposed to be a massive moment of live or die. Now yes, the duel between Kylo Ren and Rey was a live or die moment, but it has almost none of the weight behind it. And finally, The Return. God, this return sucks. Same with the mundane of The Last Jedi. Rey returns back to the Resistance as... nothing. She comes back to meet Leia for the first time. She has no connection to anyone at the base. She's not a war hero. She got a war hero killed. She's not a Jedi. She can pull things with her mind and jump super far. Luke did all these things back in Episode 5, but he didn't call himself a Jedi nor did anyone else around him. And yes, you can argue that she didn't need a big return home, but you need to have emotional investment within the return. Luke returns to the Rebellion as a war hero, meeting up with Leia and Han again. The Hobbits return to the Shire after we spent 40 minutes in it within the first movie. Spider-Man returns to his shoddy New York apartment and gets a call from Aunt May. By making the return a form of emotionally charged character or setting moment, we can probably feel the impact of the film's events and how they impacted everyone else in this environment. But we don't get that here. She begins already with the mundane of The Last Jedi. She takes off and the second movie begins and we never really see what the return becomes the mundane. It just blends together and it doesn't feel right. As a result, this makes the movie fail even more with little to no payoff and a rushed job to get the next movie going. Now, if we got a proper time jump between movies, then I would say this will be fine. But it's not. Force Awakens epilogue is just The Last Jedi's prologue. We get there when we get there! Overall, it's not the worst hero's journey. Hell, I would never call it that. But it fails on the biggest point. Rey does not change. She never changes at all. In the hero's journey, the hero must change. We don't get that. The only change we get is her using the Force now. And the thing is, there are so many different ways you could have gone through with this. If the Disney execs were so obsessed with Rey being a Skywalker, why not make her Luke's biological daughter? Make her arc about legacy, not wanting to go out and ruin the Skywalker name. Meets with Leia and trains with her or Han in Stage 2. Stick with the usual plot points of The Force Awakens. Tweak a few things here or there. Kill off Han at the usual point to give Rey more weight. Then we could have her enlightenment be sparing Kylo Ren's life. 
Again, Disney, or Kennedy, whichever the one. If you want Rey to be a Force deity, make her the daughter of Luke, fight off, and beat Kylo, but spare him, wanting to change the legacy of the Skywalkers, who always seem to butcher and fight within the family. She says, no more, and leaves. There's her enlightenment. She meets up with Leia at the Resistance HQ, and continues training with Leia, and bam, there we go. Quite honestly, there are so many ways you can make Rey into a fantastic character with a fantastic arc. And I know most of, if not all, Disney Star Wars is reactionary, but with more planning, I could see her being up there with some of the great Star Wars characters. I want Star Wars to be great, but if you're just going to throw darts and see what sticks, that's not a well-constructed arc. That's a child in a sandbox thinking Mud Pie is the Mona Lisa. In other words, a galactic-level fuck-up.